Today I'd like to do something a little different. I'd like to lead you through an experience, an experience of Catholic meditation. I'd invite you to join Peter, James, and John on the mountain with Jesus to witness the transfiguration. Yes, to witness the transfiguration. By entering into the scene of the transfiguration, we can begin to understand more clearly how this event has applies to our lives, but also how it applies during the season of Lent. I'd encourage you for this meditation to be most fruitful, to close your eyes and imagine what it is I will describe to you. Don't be shy, other people would be doing it too. Imagine yourself on the top of a mountain. Top of a mountain. Go ahead, imagine it for a moment. You're at the top of a mountain. Now, Jesus, this man that you follow, is a man that you have seen perform great miracles in the past. You have seen him multiply bread and fish to feed thousands of people. Imagine that. You have seen him heal many people who came to him that were blind, crippled, and those overwhelmed by disease like leprosy. Picture the people coming to Jesus. Remember those memories as if you were there. You've seen him calm the storm while in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. Just by his words, he calmed the storm. You have even seen him walk on water, and Peter, your friend, try to do the same. You've even seen him raise someone from the dead. His teachings, when you hear them, are courageous. They're bold. He's passionate, zealous, often leading to arguments with leaders in the community. His teachings are hard to follow, they're challenging. Even sometimes you don't fully understand them yourself. But Jesus takes the time to explain these parables to you and the other disciples. Deep inside your heart, when he speaks, every word connects to your heart. It resonates like he's speaking directly to you. You know that everything he has taught you is true and that you have full confidence in his teaching. However, something still confuses you, makes you a little uncomfortable. You doubt, maybe, something that Jesus has said publicly. He refers to God as his Father and that he is the Son of God. This statement is scary because as a fellow Jew at this time, making a public statement like this, according to the law, is punishable by death. So it makes you uncomfortable when he speaks like this. Jesus now invites you today to join him atop the nearby mountain, and you make the journey together with him. You follow him, just like you have for several years now, not knowing if this will be a time of instruction on the mountain or maybe some quiet time of rest or prayer. To your great surprise, Jesus' face begins to shine like the sun. His clothing, his whole body, becomes like white rays of light. He's almost too bright to even look at. What's happening? At either side of him now, two figures appear. Who is this? Could it be? It's Moses. And the other, the other, it's it's Elijah. How can this be? They've been dead for years. Suddenly, Peter, who's next to you, says with joy and excitement in his voice, Lord, it is good for us to be here with you. Inside, your heart is warm, full of excitement also. You echo Peter's words, Lord, it is good for me to be here with you. Thank you for inviting me to join you in this special moment. You're happy. You're amazed at what you are witnessing. All of a sudden, a bright cloud covers everyone. You can hardly see And you hear a loud voice that speaks, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. You fall to the ground, filled with awe, not knowing what's happening. Your hands are raised up, partly afraid at the power that you are witnessing. You forget where you are. You're unable to move. 
you realize now how little we are before God. As you're laying on the ground, you feel Jesus' hand touch your shoulder. You hear his calm, gentle voice say to you, Do not be afraid. Get up. As you raise your head, you see the smiling face of Jesus. His arm now around your shoulder, helping you as you stand up. Moses and Elijah, they both disappeared. You realize this is not a dream, but a real encounter, a personal encounter with the one true Son of God. Any doubt is gone. You believe now, like St. Thomas said, when face to face with the risen Lord, you too say confidently to this beaming bright Jesus, my Lord and my God. You can open your eyes now. Today's experience of the transfiguration, it's a special moment. It's here that Jesus reveals his identity to us. In our minds, he has moved maybe from a miracle worker, a brilliant teacher, to the one true Son of God. This revelation gives us courage for the upcoming temptations that we will face while in the desert this Lent. Jesus reveals his inner beauty and identity, his divinity. He gives us a glimpse of what he is calling each one of us to become. We too are called to be transformed more than just on the outside when we fast, when we pray, when we give alms this season of Lent. We are called to be transformed from the inside out. This is because, because God calls us, all of us, to greatness. He calls us to greatness. He calls us to a life that requires faith and courage. The teachings of Christ require not just a mere external observance, but rather a heartfelt cooperation. At this transfiguration, Jesus' inner beauty shone forth so much so that it transformed his outer appearance, revealing his divinity to us. We too are called to be transformed the same way in our lives. How does this transformation take place, you may ask? God told us himself in the loud voice from the cloud. It's even written in our Sunday Missals. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Listen to him. God identifies Jesus. This is my son. And he gives him the authority of all teaching so that there's no longer any doubts in our mind. The voice of God speaks directly to us today. We are the ones who seem to need reminding who Jesus Christ is. God reminds us a second time in this transfiguration event. Remember the first time was at his baptism. This strong, powerful voice from heaven may strike fear into our hearts as we experienced it through our imagination. During this overwhelming experience, we too would have fallen to the ground if we were there in awe next to the other three apostles, Peter, James, and John. Jesus responds to our fear and our amazement, our wonder and awe with those famous four words, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of the greatness that God is calling us to. Do not be afraid of the transformation that will happen in your life when you follow Christ completely and not just on the surface. Do not be afraid of the sacrifices that you make in Lent, of how they will stir up your life. Do not be afraid of the changes that will happen this Lenten season if you give God permission to change your heart. Do not be afraid when you hear the voice of God at the end of your life, when he says, this is my son, or this is my daughter in whom I am well pleased. For it's on that day that you will be filled with a lasting and eternal joy because you will be one with God in heaven. For all eternity, that's what we're made for. So as we continue our celebration today, 
Let's remember Peter's response that we heard of the transfiguration when he said, Lord, it is good for us to be here with you. Let that same response from Peter be what we say in our hearts, maybe even aloud, every time we encounter Jesus in the Eucharist. Spending time with God, it's good. It's for our best interests. It should be something we enjoy, something we long for, and something we desire. Lord, it is truly good to be here with you today.